Jamie here, Jamie here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. Wednesday, tw uh, November 27th, <laughs> Thanksgiving Eve, 326 here. Sorry, just laughing. That's what I posted in the chat room. Uh, no gravy recipes. Just trying to have a little humor into the into the holiday. But talk really quick about the market, some names I'm looking at, and go from there. But obviously, markets are closed tomorrow, so I want to wish everybody a, a healthy, happy Thanksgiving. Then we have a half day on Friday, and then it's kind of into the end of the year. And then you'll start hearing about the Santa Claus rally, the tax law selling, all those buzzwords that always come up. And then you'll see some names move that uh, you'd be like, why is that moving? And then they'll chalk it up to tax loss selling or or reallocation of portfolios, year end, window dressing, whatever the phrases they want to use. Uh, but hopefully we catch some of those into the end of the year. So uh, just really quick first, I posted on, I don't know if I posted in the chat room, I, I think I did, but I'm still working on the top five webinar. I talked about it this morning too. I, I shouldn't say still working. I'm starting to work on find some names, right? So uh, just looking at some of the names I did last year, uh, so if you don't know uh, the, the stocks, and a lot of them I didn't trade too much, uh, you know, unfortunately, but Stur STRL was my, was the best performer, up nearly 130%. Star Surgical, which was actually up really nice at the start of year. Uh, that's come back in, it's down 10%. Then you have, um, hang on one sec. Then you have uh, GPCR, so Structure Therapeutics, that's the GLP-1, right? Then you have Meritage Homes. I really like to, that that space into the into this past year because the rates were at high levels and these these companies can work in some uh instruments to get those to get you a, a less than a you know seven percent rate at the time down to five and a half percent by cutting the price how by taking the price off the home uh that was mth uh, star surgical agilisys which was up 60 percent kind of in the home not the home the uh travel uh, hospitality sector and pr providing their point of sale and other things but great names uh Hopefully, I find some other good ones. But I, I was going through the uh, the top five from that I was looking at, some of the names I was looking at, and there was just like three of them. Which, you know, what I had STRL and STRL Sterling is kind of like a name nobody looks at. It's very un it's, uh, there's only one analyst that covers it, um, but it's pretty much it was it's a construction company, right? So it's been consolidated. Well, I wouldn't say it's consolidated. It's been consolidating, right? It's been acquiring folks and uh, just great results year after year because of in my opinion a lot of it has to do with the inf the 2.5 trillion dollar infrastructure bill that went through what two years ago and you started to see those tailwinds but then you look at some of these other names i had another one badger meter and and they were doing water meters i remember looking at this i'm like i'm no water water systems uh i forget exactly the details but i'm like wow this is pretty good stuff here and sure enough the stock starts at 150 it's at 230 uh fix so fixed comfort systems, that was a, a ticker's fix, great ticker. The company does HVAC and things like that. Again, another company that's consolidating mom and pop and small HVAC companies and bring them into this big conglomerate. That stock was 200 bucks to start 2024. It's at 500 bucks. Uh, anyway, so you can always get some good names off the old old list. And sometimes when I'm doing my top five stock webinar, I look at some of the ones that I had the previous year. And some of those made it into the, the next year because maybe, uh, you know, I... The, the saying always goes, right? Never wrong, just early. So uh, we'll see what happens here this this coming year. But uh, I was saying this morning, just don't be surprised if there's a name uh, over the next week or two, all of a sudden, uh, I'm like, I got to get in and you'll see me add a strike and then I'll explain it. But it uh, doesn't happen often, but it's happened before. So now uh, that's top five stock webinar. Uh, so overall, just take a look at the market spy and tight range. It's in the red this morning, uh, today, but you know, look like, look like, hey, maybe we're going to rally and, and hold the highs, hold the 600. Got up to 685, couldn't hold that. And then down 597 is the low. So another $5 trading range on, 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 the, on the SPY. So, you, you know, half a percent trading range, not bad, right? So uh, all things considered, we had the PC data this morning, a tad under expectations. Uh, people say it's the highest level it's been in whatever, six months, but that was, it was expected to be. But they'll make the headlines to fit. Uh, the narrative to get enough clicks, right? People want to know, oh my gosh, inflation, it's rearing its head back. Well, it kind of is, but there, I mean, there's other things that went on and what have you, but it just uh, fits the narrative, right? But for now, now we have, did, the, did I miss the Fed minutes? <laughs> Wait a second. All right, and it, well, all right. Well, I won't talk about that. All right. So uh, nice setup here. Also take a look at the VIX, despite the, the SPY being down about four tenths of a percent, VIX is only up 1%. So uh, I think that just all bodes well. And at some point, 
uh, once we hold that 600 handle, hopefully we get done on Friday. And then I think it's to 610 and that'll be the next area I'll kind of revisit. All right. So individual names, Joel B was running out of the gate all the way up to 862 in the morning before pulling back. It's, it's still up. It's in the green. Uh, you know, after it's huge move to see it kind of hold green, I'm, I'm happy with that. Of course, I would love to see it just keep going 10, 12, 15 bucks. But I think it's going to take its time. I was actually looking out for the April strikes. I'll probably just wait and be patient, maybe uh, Friday or Monday, um, and go from there. But if you take a look at the level, 775 is the key area. Uh, sure enough, well, we got down to 767 today. So just want to see that hold if we do get some pullbacks. Um, and maybe gets another test of that on Friday. If it does, then maybe I'll look to get some April strikes. So that's that's Joby. Teladoc looked like it was going to break out all the way up to 1175. I thought it was going to get over 12 in the morning, and then it gave it all back. Hit the lows at 2 o'clock, 11.45. It's still up 1%. Um, the investor day is next Tuesday. I didn't know that. Thank you, K. Mitch. Pointed that out. So uh, hopefully it brings a party. I, typically when you have an investor day, it's not the negative time. That it's, it's not the time they bring the bad news, right? It's typically, uh, you know, it's cheerleading. Ra ra sis, boom, ba, right? So I have to think that'll be net positive. I You start looking at 200 days, it's... It's 1092 now, so I, as long as it holds that 200 day, I think it's fine in the coming weeks. Still love that one for an even bigger move, especially if it's FOMO. And if there's any positive updates from their analyst meeting, and I'm sure they'll uh, investor day. Uh, that's Teladoc. I told you about Joby. Square, just the last three sessions have been so frustrating. I mean, take a look at this 89 handle. Might as well just you might as well just put an anchor at 89, just have a trade there for it looks like it's it's uh like in a tug of war at 89 and it's not it's it's not getting anywhere right so at least it's holding it and we'll see what happens it was funny yesterday the, the you had bitcoin down a little bit and all these other names in the space getting destroyed micro strategy and then today you have the reverse bitcoin's up seven percent and these names rallying and now square's flat so yesterday i was saying wow not too bad square's only down nearly two percent with all the other shenanigans but then today we get the other way and it's not participating so Maybe some consolidation after its big run. I think that bodes well. Oh, yeah, and with Teladoc. So if you take a look at Teladoc. And I'm, if, keep mind, but inside days. So it's back-to-back -back inside sessions, which typically presets consolidation for the next leg. So I think that that's a nice setup. I'm getting off the uh, beaten path here. P Peloton looks like it wants to break over 10 bucks. I, I don't know if it's going to happen here before the close. It's 27 minutes. Uh, maybe on Friday. I'm just trying to do some some data diving, right? And you take a look at Peloton's performance after Thanksgiving. Everybody puts on the pounds and then they, they get on their bike. Who knows? I mean, that's not it, but um, it was up 17% last year from the end of Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving was a was a week and a half. So this this year is like the really short time between Thanksgiving and, and uh, Christmas holiday. Last year was a week ago. So there was more time, but I, I still think that, that bodes well. Not, you know, unfortunately... Uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday is the last trading session of November. So we only have one day to get that return after post Thanksgiving. But uh, if there's his, his, I always like historicals, right? History is one of the better indicators. <laughs> the past is one of the better indicators of the future, right? Uh, doesn't mean past, past performance <laughs> equals future performance, but uh, it's, it's like you take, I always say you take a uh, fundamentals, technical analysis, uh, all the information you can get, and then you make your best judgment decision. Some people look at charts and think they can, t you know, trade just on charts, and maybe they can. That's just not how I trade. I use charts as as like a, a guide, right? It's like a it's like a ruler, and then all, all the other things, the fundamentals, the sentiment, the overall market. So anyway, rants for other days and going on a tangent here. Uh, SE teasing keeps trying to SE um, well SE limited keeps teasing to try and break out over its. Post earnings high. That 117 handle has to break. Still like that one for 130. I it's it did it's done this before. It did it back in October. It did it back in, in September. Back in September, it was 70. It, it's gapped after its earnings. It ran 75, tested 80, then came back to 75 in September, and then just chopped around for like two and a half weeks, uh, and then finally broke up, broke out up to 90, and then chopped around 85, 90, uh, and then we had the earnings up to 117. So. Then it's chopping around, chopping around. I think the next leg into the 120s comes soon. I'll wait. I'll wait for it to break 117, and maybe I'll look for some more strikes. Um, that's that. And then some other names. And I keep talking about uh, into it. You know, it's it's been chopping between that 640 and 633. Uh, once that 633, 632 handle breaks, I I can see it dropping another 20, 25 bucks. And if that happens, the the puts are gonna be up a couple hundred percent. So even a far out of the money ones. So I keep looking at it. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to pick and choose my 
my uh, entry. So don't, don't be surprised if I get something there. And then take a look at Travel Zoo today. Uh, it was more multi year highs, uh, 2075 it hit. Again, very illiquid. So I, it, it's tough for me to really to grab some yet, but at some point I will. I had someone ask questions on it on FinTwit, pretty much saying like it's an old company, it's not growing, uh, is raising, is <laughs> finally offering a subscription for the site and for the members. Is that really organic growth? And I'm like, well, yeah, it is. I, my best analogy is Wix. And Wix was one of my favorite stocks. I don't know, it was 40, 50, 60 bucks. It might've been one of my top five stocks one year. <clears throat> I think it was. Back when it was 50, 60 bucks. And yet Spruce Point Capital saying it was a $20 stock. And I used to, that's back in the day when I used to engage a lot of people <laughs> uh, in conversation, but well, social media. But um, if you take a look at Wix, my big bull case on Wix was that they have this freemium model, right? Now, I mean, the freemium model exists for a lot of companies, but they had like millions of free users. So their cohort of free users, and then they were just going to monetize them, right? And they were just going to convert them. And I'm not saying Travel Zoo is doing that, right? They're still going to they're gonna roll out and we'll see how successful or not successful they are. But if they're not successful, they have nothing to lose, right? What do they lose? Nothing, right? Are they going to disappoint some customers? I don't know. I don't think so, right? So uh, well, I think what's going to happen in the rollout too is the, the freemium members are going to have, when they see offers in their email, every day you get emails, they'll have, you click the button to, to book it and you'll say, oh, you need to be a member. You pay 40 bucks and now you're a member, right? So then you get your deal and then you can get more deals. And now that you paid 40 bucks for that deal, it's almost like you have a vested interest to continue to use the platform. You're going to use it more, right? There's a vested interest for you to use it more. So it's like a win-win for them, win-win for the customer and a win-win for the advertisers. Cause that's how travels who makes the, mo the money now, right? The partnerships, the deals, with the, all the cruise lines and uh, the vacations and all that, they send that to Travel Zoo and Travel Zoo gets their members to to get a deal. And then there's a ba back end money sent, right? So the, the issue would be like if the deals, the, the advertising pulls the money back, but I I, I don't see that. So we'll see how the all, all the economics look uh, into, into January and, and their first earning call, we'll, if they give any insight, but uh, Interesting story, I think. And I keep using the rationale, right? I mean, whether you're growing organically or you're growing by adding members doesn't, I mean, it's great if you do members and organically, but this company has been around, I think it said 1999 on the email today, right? So you start doing the math there. That's 34 years of, um, no, excuse me, 25 years of, of being around. And when I looked, they had like 13 million a freemium users back in 2013. So they've still grown over hundred percent in regards to their user base. It's just that over the last couple years, their growth has languished. Some of it had to do with COVID. Some of it had to do with some of the businesses that they had to let go. I think they had Japan, uh, travels to Japan. They had to nix rants for other days. Anyway, have a happy Thanksgiving folks. Thanks for listening. Let's have a great uh, Friday. Uh, enjoy your meal and uh, rock and roll. I'll be back on audio Friday morning.